David, this isn't even on the show sheet, but I was listening to the update. Jamal Williams says he does not like change and he wants to come back here. And I'm really wondering how how valuable is he to this team? I know he scored a bunch of touchdowns. I know he did. But are you breaking the bank for this guy? Because he's going to want more than just a one-year deal. Because I know people are going to call, just put him on a one-year deal. Doesn't work that way. He wants he, security. He wants he, a couple years. He's going to want security, and he's going to want some money. And I'm sorry. When it comes to NFL running backs, the shelf life is not that great. I, I got a cap. I got a limit that... I'm not paying him. If if he's coming in asking for, you know, at least ten million a year, I can't do that at all. I just can't. There's no way in the world I would pay him that much money. So if he comes correct for I'd be honest with you, maybe a three year twenty million dollar deal. I know it ain't my money. But running backs, I think you can go and get a new one. I think you can go into the draft. Maybe this is where, for everybody out there saying, hey, have you seen B. John Robinson? Maybe you go get a younger back. I didn't really see what Jamal Williams, I got to know. I know he's a leader. That's what I was going to ask you. Do How much do you value locker room camaraderie and leadership? Because that's, I think, where his value is. But I, not 10 million a year. I agree with that. It's not. It's I I I cannot see I think that would be a poor decision if Brad Holmes paid him that much money to stay here. This is one where Jamal and his agent has to know their worth. You could ask for it, but I'm not giving it to you. I don't see it. I don't know. Is he one of the best running backs in football? He had a good year this year. He scored a lot of touchdowns. But it's also a contract year. So a lot right. of players have great years in contract years. Right. And he, like I said, he scored a lot of touchdowns. But to me, those he was the great fantasy football player. But I didn't see him as being that guy. Like, oh, my God. I, I, I don't think Saquon Barkley. I didn't think Derrick Henry and Jamal Williams. Okay? No. Can't do that. Well, let me give you this because I'm just looking at some numbers. Joe Mixon's at 12, Aaron Jones at 12. Under that would be 7 million running backs. Of course, Saquon Barkley's about to get some money, but you got James Conner at 7, Leonard Fournette at 7. Okay, that, okay about fine. Eight, so, eight yeah. and a half. So three year, 21 million. Yeah, there you go. You get the, I, That's the highest that I would go for him. I'm not paying him $10 million, and I'm not signing him for longer than three years if he wants to come back. And if you're really shrewd about it, I'm going to sign you to a three-year deal, but I got con- the Lions have control over year number three because, yeah, I'm sorry. You know, you're a great leader in the locker room, but when running backs go bad, running backs go bad fast. You don't believe me? Just keep watching. There's a reason why, you know, Dallas has got a big decision to make with Tony Pollard because he's a better running back, not Zeke Elliott. Zeke's washed up. Zeke is done. And anything that Zeke had left in him got taken out of him in the final play of the 49er game when they lined him up at center. That lets you know what they actually thought of Zeke Elliott. Oh, no, where's my offensive lineman? Oh, no, they're about 50 feet to the left of you, Zeke. Wait, so it's just me? Just you. So I got to block it? Yep. Any questions? Yeah. Go ahead and snap that ball. The Niners were like, "Real Zeke? Zeke, don't snap that ball. We will break you in half if you do. But I got to. Zeke, don't snap the ball. Yeah, Tony Pollard, to me, more valuable. I look at Jamal. I I just I don't see a guy that I would pay that much money. And like I said, we, David and I hadn't talked about this. I just heard it in the update. 248-539-9797. Are you re-signing Jamal Williams? I'm not. I think that you can go get a younger running back. I think that there are a bunch of running backs in the draft that you could bring in that could be just as productive as Jamal. And I know if you're just talking about leadership, that's a lot of money to pay for just leadership. I don't know if I'm going that route. But the cap, 
I would go three year. I would pay seven million dollars a year. That's the going rate for a guy in 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 Jamal's bracket. He's he's not Derrick Henry. He's not a game changer. He's you know when and when I say game changer, I mean when teams line up, when the defenses are trying to figure out where this person is. That's when you're a game changer. When you play Minnesota, you got to always know where Justin Jefferson is at all times. When you play the Titans, all right, Derrick Henry, that's the main focus. We got to stop him. I don't know if the focus is you got to stop Jamal. You still got Swift here who, let's face it, Swift was the starting back. Jamal took over. He took advantage of a great opportunity in a contract year. I would caution Brad Holmes. I would caution Lions fans. Do not overpay for a running back because you can get running backs. I would find somebody else if that was me. See, my thing is, and I I don't know if Lions fans are worried about this at all, but we saw what uh, Brad Holmes did last offseason. He has a tendency to want to keep his own players. So I wonder if that worries Lions fans that, okay, Jamal Williams had a really good year. And since Brad Holmes wants to keep his players, will he overpay to keep Jamal Williams because of what he brings to the locker room? Because I would be concerned as a fan. Because I don't, you're right, you don't need to overpay for him. If you want to keep him, fine. But if it gets ridiculous, and of course he's going to ask for money. He needs his money. I mean, he has to have security. He wants to be paid. Um, But I just, I wouldn't want to overpay. And Lions fans, I wonder if you're worried about that. Because that, to me, that, that, that's what I'm looking at, that you may end up overpaying. And I, I just think that there are a bunch of running backs out there that you can get, especially in this, in this draft class coming out, that you could get second, third, fourth round backs. <laughs> and look, look, I mean, look at the backs going to the Super Bowl. You don't need that first rounder. You could get a great running back in lesser rounds because they are very expendable. Two, four, eight. Five three nine nine seven nine seven is the phone number. Uh, we got any ticket text, David? Two years, ten million for Jamal. Someone okay, says. that's 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 that that's Frutios right there. Okay. <laughs> now, now you're getting Jamil Williams, not even Jamal. Says Jamal Williams hasn't even hit one thousand carry carries, which is the middle ground for running back statistically. He had over 1,000 yards, 17 touchdowns, and he will sign a cap-friendly deal to stay. If he signs a cap-friendly deal, okay, then fine. I, I, I just, I'm, I cannot, I cannot break the bank if, if that's me. Someone says, uh, Rico, this is Detroit. I'm sorry, but I feel like we have to pay for guys that actively want to be here. We need that locker room camaraderie in Detroit. Okay, and I'm glad somebody said that. Because once again, do you want to be a Detroit team or do you want to be a championship team? A Detroit team is, well, we got to keep this guy because he wants to be here. Now, I was told that this is now the hot team. Everybody likes him, and you're going to be able to attract free agents. You're going to be able to attract people. If that's the case, you don't have to settle for him. If he gives you a cap-friendly deal and not two years at $10 million, okay, he ain't playing for $5 million a year for two years. At that point, if I'm him, I'm going back on the open market. But, yeah, I would go three years, $21 million, maybe $22 million, but I, I'm not getting out of that $7 million range. I may give him a $7 million and some change, but, man, I, I, that's, to me, I can't. I can't do it. I, I saw he, he was good. He was not great. And I think – Put it this way, the running back that I like, I'm looking at like this draft class coming out. The running back that I would like, he's 17th or 16th in the draft class, which means he'll probably be there. And I think that this is a guy that could easily step in there and get the same production. Running backs are expensive. Value is so that if you think you can get that guy that can do the same, get that. I mean, I know you guys made fun of him. If not, if you could get that guy, okay. But even before the Niners got Christian McCaffrey, man, it was just running back by committee. They just stick people back there. Okay. Raheem Mostert, uh, Wilson. Right. Anyone you can name. Ellie, like, okay, well, he's in now. He's playing this week. He, oh, he's hurt? Okay, find, him, find me. What's the janitor doing? 
you can get this done without overpaying. I think the money that you have should be going towards your defense, not a running back. And let me ask you this one, because this came through on the ticket text. Now, you just said if you can get that guy. Someone says, forget Jamal, give me Saquon, and go all the way in or top-tier running back behind this O-line. Hmm. If you go get Saquon, you're going to have to pay a lot of money. Saquon, think of it like this. You're pretty much looking at a McCaffrey-type deal where the Giants, and I'm trying to think, is Saquon a free agent? He is technically a free agent. So we'll see if they franchise him, but that'll come later. So if they franchise him, you still got to come off picks. You would if they decide to, yeah, do that and you can trade, yeah. So I'm thinking if that's the case, then, yeah, I would do that. And He's going to come at a hefty price. You get Saquon, you better be ready to win the Super Bowl. But here's the thing. The tag numbers just came out of what they would be for this year. Running back tag is just $10 million. So he would get the $10 million. That's guaranteed, but that's just one year. Right. So uh, if you trade for him, a guy that's on a tag, you're going to have to come with a deal now. You're not just keeping him on the $10 million tag. No, no, no. But if you trade for him, you're going to be trading some first-rounders. Correct. They're going to want something. You're going to give up a pick, and then you're going to have to give him an extension. You're probably going to – oh, yeah, yeah, trust me. He's going to want some serious cheddar. He's going to want that money. You – I'm not a big fan. I mean, in Root for Radio, it would be funny because you could watch Mike's head explode because you know he'd be upset. You don't pay. But, I mean, Saquon is he's, – he's one of those game changers where, yeah, I've seen him take over games before. I like that. I'm not adverse to it. But just know, you're going for broke. You go for Saquon, that's it. Which is why, honestly – I'd rather get it back out of the draft. It would cost you less, less wear and tear on the tires, and you could still get the job done. Just my opinion. 248-539-9797. I left my sheet out there. Do I have a read coming up? Okay, good.